It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a Kiwitz. The all new HT112B. Let's take a look. Brand new and oh so cool by design. This is one multimeter you don't see every day. Big shout out to Kiwitz for sending the HT112B for this review. Kiwitz ships with a super, super case. Look at that ice hard shell. Uh, really good quality zipper. Um, even has extra padding on the inside and nice little retaining mechanism here. So, wow, that is a classy little case for this cheapo. And uh, bonus to Kiwitz for doing that. It also encloses a set of test leads. Now, this is a good and a bad thing. The good thing is they are modular. Now, what do we mean by modular? Well, it means that they can come out of the darn meter. They're not stuck in there permanently, aka the Anning style. Yeah, look at that. You are stuck with that test lead for the life of the meter. The Anning input leads themselves, the, the ends that go into the input jacks are small. They're not factory um, standards. Uh, on the right, we have the uh, Kiwitz input jack, and on the left, a standard input jack that fits into 95% of any multimeter out there. You can see there is quite a difference. Uh, the Kiwitz one is just small. And that is a problem because if you lose your jacks, you are kind of going to have a problem because, yeah, it ain't going to fit. It ain't, it ain't going to work. It just, it's not going to work. It doesn't work. So um, don't lose your input jacks. If you purchase this meter, it's going to be problematic. Uh, what were they thinking? Nah. The leads themselves are 600 volt Cat 3. Um, pretty decent looking. Nice and pointy tips. Uh, all in all, really good. So yeah, just, just that whole form factor thing. Uh, yeah. Mm. Functionality wise, I mean, this thing is loaded. It's a smart meter with a manual functionality. And uh, I really like that combination as well. The fit and finish is, is really good. Form factor is really nice. Uh, I like it. It has that cell phone style look. In fact, they're calling this a cell phone style multimeter. Um, but no, you can't call the mother-in-law. It's probably a good thing. Boot does come off nice and rubbery without any issues. And yeah, look at that. Now we can see we have no tilt stand, no standing bail. Uh, so you'll have to have it sitting like that because yeah, it ain't gonna do that. Too bad, uh, not even on the back of the holster. No tilt stand, nothing. Eh. Just a tad lighter than the Anning. Um, they're very much one and the same in terms of the overall fit and finish. Uh, both nicely done. Both have a, a good size screen, but um, you'll see that is where the similarity ends. Now, unlike the Anning, which is strictly a touch screen, just hold down on it and it turns on. Uh, there you go. The Kiwitz, you have to actually hold down for a couple seconds. I said a couple seconds. And it comes on. Now, right away, we have a difference in terms of clarity. We have one that is LCD technology, and the other has that uh, reverse uh, LCD technology. Uh, you know, your preferences may vary. Um, I think they both look pretty good. They both are susceptible to glare, as you can see. Um, but... Overall, in terms of re readability, I'm going to give the kudos to the Anning in this one. Now, there's a big difference here in terms of, yeah, look at that. Look at that cool display. That is so, so nice. Um, out of the way, Anning. You've got that auto mode, uh, which is continually displaying that analog uh, cycle. So it's giving you three different options here a uh, voltage resistance and continuity that is always there um, has a really really nice overall uh, look to it um, I, I like it I, I really do selector switch has four main buttons power button the select slash flashlight the hold slash backlight as well as the smart and manual function underneath the meter we have our three inputs on the far left, we have a current. In the middle are common. And on the right are capacitance, voltage, resistance, diode, and continuity. Yeah, so overall, fit and finish wise, once again, I like it. It's nice, feels good in the hand. Obviously, this thing is built rugged. Uh, definitely can take a licking and keep on ticking. Backlight enabled, you can tell it is a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, yeah, not a, a big difference, but a little different. It's a little bit better. Uh, 
the top of the meter we have smart mode voltage ac dc resistance continuity millivolts ac dc in manual mode frequency and duty cycle capacitance diode microamps ac dc milliamps ac dc finally ncv and live detect throughout most of the readings you do have a temperature bar here giving you a outlook of your standard ambient temperature right here we've got that input lead and you can tell it is just oh so tiny takes a little bit of force to put in but boy once they're in they're definitely not going anywhere look at that oh yeah that is in all right let's do dc accuracy so in standard auto mode it is unable to read that millivolt setting let's see if we can do the regular voltage yeah no problem there 2.51 volts excellent so i'm going to switch over to manual mode and there we go 250.3 millivolts spot on let's see how quickly we can resistance range in auto mode Sitting at one meg right now. Let's go to three megs. Whoa, six megs, 10 megs. Oh yeah, that is fast. 100K, 300K, 600K, 630K, 633K. All right, you get the idea. This thing is fast to range in auto mode. Beauty. Finally, we are in low resistance mode. Well, we're still in auto mode, but we're gonna check low resistance. And this will probably engage the continuity just because it is under 50 ohm. 8.25 ohm is what we wanna see. 8.3, yeah, looking good. All right, let's check out AC current in auto mode. Here we go. And yeah, that's nice and fast, looking good. And there is the frequency at the top, 60 Hertz, beauty. Next up, continuity. Now remember these leads, yes, they are modular, but they're also small, so I can't even try the Pro Masters. Oh well, so we're stuck with these leads for better or for worse. Three, two, one, here we go. So it definitely takes a while for that uh, to latch. Once it does, it is fairly loud, and we do have a visual indicator at the top, which is a real nice treat. Yeah, but it is slow. Yeah, slow. Doable, just slow. Sixty-eight point eight decibels, the maximum output in continuity. Yeah, it's quiet. So, being a smart multimeter, um, it does have a relay. You hear it clicking a lot, um, and it is as well prone to interference. So I've got a magnet here and let's just pass that over. So yeah, it is susceptible to a magnetic interference, um, one of the downsides to any relay. Now that's why shielding is so important, uh, so there's no else sort of outside interference, but mm, yeah, you're gonna hear this relay a lot. Diode mode is next, here we go. Starting off with the green LED, and I'm not in diode mode. Okay, so we have to use our function and set it to diode. There we go. Here we go, LED. Light up, baby. Yeah, it is lit up, barely. And over the yellow, same thing with that forward voltage drop, two for two. Oh yeah, three for three. Beauty. Finally, the white LED. <gasps> Survey says it's a go. Five for five. Ura in LED mode. Ah, oh, so sweet. Maximum output voltage in diode mode, 3.9 volts. Another great feature, I call it the cat's meow, is that in dial mode, yes, it has audible, audible diode. You don't have to strain your neck. No, you just hear that beep. And you know your diode is good. Oh, love it, love it, love it, I love it. Both of the meters are in auto mode, and we're gonna take a quick look at voltage. 
And look at that, both have that temperature reading as well. 21 for the inning, 20.6 for the Kiwis with that onboard sensor. Okay, sitting at 7.38 volts. Oh God, I love it. Sitting at 7.37 volts. Sitting at 7.38 volts right now, and wow, once again, that anning is just so accurate. Remember, that was pretty well on spec, right up there with the big guy, Mr. Keysight, uh, which was recently calibrated, so wow, good to know. 7.38, 7.37, up, up, and away. 14, let's take it to 15.01 volts, 15.01 for the anning, 15.02 for the Kiwis. A little higher, shall we? 19.51 volts, 19.50 for the anning, 19.52 for the Kiwis. Hey, good stuff. 25.75 volts according to the DC power supply. 25.73 for the anning, 25.75. Wow, for the Kiwis. Okay, we're gonna max it out now. 31.18 volts. I'm sorry, 31.16 according to the DC power supply. And there we are again, 31.16 for Mr. Anning, and 31.021 for Kiwitz. Okay, well now it's going down a little. It's taking a little, okay, it's, it's coming a little more closer. It's, it's, all right, so you see we have a little bit of wavering with the Kiwitz, whereas that Anning is just, boom, it's there. That's it, that's all. It does not waver. Now, once again, we do, we do have a uh, um, range bar graph now we can take a look at those bar graphs as well at the top uh it is located on the anning and at the bottom it is here on the kiwis now i'm going to put that backlight on the kiwis make it just a little bit easier to see and just let's play around let's see if there's one more responsive bar graph yeah definitely that kiwis is not as fast as the anning all in all really good performer in the dc voltage mode good stuff taking a look at the current this is up to 600 milliamps maximum uh you cannot do anything higher but uh yeah guess what that fuse is blown and that was my fault that was my fault i'm not blaming the meter i did a boo-boo and yeah i blew the fuse so mm, i hope i can find another one does give you that nice error indicating that the fuse has been blown. You get a nice beeping sound as well. And there is a uh, icon coming at the top that is telling you that your fuse is, yeah. All right, so it's a standard fuse, five by 20, uh, 630 milliamp. Let's see if I got one. Alrighty, I was not able to find a 600 milliamp, five by 20 at the minute, at the moment rather, but I did find a 250. So yeah, no worries here. Uh, it's just fine and dandy. Oh, shame on me, but yeah, there you go. Alrighty, Mr. Nasty is back. Yes, you plug. Boy, oh boy, you are freaking out my multimeters. Okay, we're in NCV mode right now, and all you have to do is just put it to a source, and look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, it is sensitive, unlike you. And oh, so nice, so sweet, yeah. Oh, beauty. And now it's plugged into that live mode. So rather than NCV, it's basically live as a probing function. And when you hit the circuit, it tells you it's hot. It gives us a nice visual indicator as well as an audible. Good stuff. According to the user guide, 60 millifarad, 60,000 microfarad is the maximum in capacitance range not i'm going to show you guys what this little guy can do this is a hundred millifarad capacitor it's now in millifarad mode remember 60 is all it's capable of but it's not 100 millifarad beauty amazing and you know what that was fast super fast oh so impressed thank you kiwitz okay so to take the unit apart we have four phillips screws and voila now when you do remove the backing you got to be careful because those batteries are sitting in this plastic housing and they just 
come flying out like that. So it's really too bad there's no retention mechanism here. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that when you take it apart. Now, yeah, as you can see, uh, you know what? No worries, no surprises, no shielding. Once again, it would really be nice to see the manufacturer step up to the plate and see somebody come out with a properly insulated uh, EMF free multimeter. And really, it just doesn't cost a lot of money. We're talking pennies. Starting off with the input protection on the current side. Remember, this does not do high current, strictly milliamps, microamps, that's it, that's all. It did come with a ceramic 630 milliamp fuse, which I invariably blew. Um, but yeah, the housing goes right there. PTC, this is on the voltage side. And here we have a resistor clamp as well as a diode clamp. Once again, does not do current. We're not gonna see any current shunts or limiting resistors, what have you. A um, couple mouth packages. Basically, you know, we are gonna keep this on the low voltage side of things, please. It's not meant for high voltage, high current capacity circuits. So just be aware of that when you purchase the meter. Once again, this is one of the few multimeters that are smart and have refused the embedded test lead scenario. Now, once again, these are unfortunately not your average style test leads. Uh, they are smaller, much smaller than your normal input jacks. So you cannot just use any test leads you want. You really are tied to the ones that come with this meter. That's really too bad. I hope Kai Wheats, you're listening and you do change that for future revisions. Really nice soldering job on the leads themselves. Nice big globs of solder um, looking good. Of course, they're the split variety, but once again, really makes no difference. Right in the middle here, that looks like a relay, and we will look at that in a moment. Uh, let's just move up the board, shall we? And here, starting off on the left, is the main IC. That is from SDIC. Uh, it is a nice little LQF P64 package. And it is our 6,000 count ADC TrueRMS converter integrated voltage divider. You get the idea. It does it all. Directly to the right of it, we have our TM1622. That is the LCD driver. Here we have the connectors for the batteries themselves. And at the top, there is our NCV. It is embedded into the unit. And wow, very, very nice, very streamlined. And that was some really good NCV detection. I'm telling you, very, very sensitive. So once again, um, you don't often see this type of embedded NCV that does so well, but in this case, it did really, really well. Okay, let's take a look on the other side. Finally, at the top, we have the LED for the flashlight. Take a look at the gauge of the PCB as well. Nice and thick. You know what? Let's poke, 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 poke. Let's not poke. Let's pull out my digital caliper. See how thick it is. So according to Mr. Meditoyo, the thickness is just over one millimeter. So yeah, nice and thick. Beauty. All right, so we're just gonna pull it off, dip it over, and whoa, look what grandma brought home. Oh yeah. Well, speaking of relays, there it is. One big honking relay. And right beside it, believe it or not, that is our speaker, that is a piezo. Wow, you don't see one that look like that every day. Very, very neat. If we take a look at that fuse holder assembly. Uh, you know, I think they could have done a better job than that. Basically, the fuse is just sitting in there um, by gravity. Um, yeah, these are spring loaded uh, to a degree, but you know what? It's really not in there very, very strong. You drop the meter, I don't know, is it gonna stay in place or is it gonna come rolling out? I wish they did a better job with that fuse holder. We'll flip over the LCD top here. And come on, there you go. And there is the uh, main display header here at the top. We have a fab on the PCB of 2020. Definitely a newer revision, that's for sure. And once again, you see that NCV uh, on both sides of the multimeter. Overall, very clean, uh, very, very uh, nice. I like what I see. Okay, gonna put it all back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Kaiweets HT112B. You know what? I like this smart multimeter. I like it a lot. Not the fact that it's got 6,000 counts, true RMS, analog style meter uh, in a digital package, but you know what? It just seems to work well. 
Um, yeah, there's some issues here. I'm not going to deny the fact that those input jacks really suck. They got to do something about that. You really got to have a modular jack that you can take out and put in any meter. It's an industry standard and really they have to change that input jack. Input jack aside though, this meter really kicks the llamas butt. You know, it just is fast to range, even in smart mode. Uh, it's always accurate and I really had a pleasure using it in the last week or so and it did not fail me once. Too bad about the shielding. You can see how that relay can definitely get confused uh, if there's an external source. So once again, it'd be nice to see some shielding on these cheapos. However, at the end of the day, for about 25 bucks, it's really hard to go wrong with this little cell phone style multimeter. The Kaiweats HT112B gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, lot, it's some more coming, so don't be shy. And I love giving away prizes, as you can tell. Sometimes I just do it out of the blue, no warning, so stay on the channel, subscribe, thumbs up like you know all that stuff hey till the next one keep on testing